right here watching TVC Breakfast. Let's get to our next discussion. Now, one of the two conditions provided by the Nigerian Constitution regarding the nomination of ministers is found in Section 42 of the Constitution and state that, you know, Subsection, a, uh, subsection 1 uh, says that the nomination of any person to the office of a minister for confirmation by the Senate shall be done within 60 days after the date the president has taken the oath of office. With just a few days to go before the 60-day time frame elapses, Nigerians are anxiously waiting for the ministerial nominees list. There are speculations that President Tinubu may have submitted the ministerial list to the Senate last week. But the upper chamber is delaying the announcement because of some ch of changes rather being if effected on the list. Now, uh, the Senate has come to say, well, we haven't received uh, the nominees list yet. All right, so we'll be talking about this. Joining us in the studio is chair and partner of the Energy Practice Group at uh, Bloomfield Law Practice, Dr. Ayodeleoni. It's nice to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you Great. for having me. Now, I, I know you've been following this uh, as a Nigerian where everyone is looking forward to uh, the ministerial list as well. But if you're going through and trying to analyze and see if, you know, all of the things, if you're some of the reports, some of the speculation, mixing them together to analyze all of that, what really is going through your mind in all of these? I, well, I, I, I'll start by saying that um, the president has done what he promised he was going to do. <laughs> um, and when you hear people criticize, you then ask, he said he was going to do ABC, I mean, one of the very few presidents anywhere in Africa who've made promises and kept their promises from, from the first day. So I expect that you'd have a team of politicians and technocrats. I mean, naturally, you, you don't have a choice. So I, I'm just hoping that there'll be gender balance, inclusion, you know, and diversity. That's what's been on my mind, that you want to be sure that you have round uh, pegs and round holes and not otherwise, and that the president continues um, the way he started, such that he then doesn't let um, political considerations um, take precedence over, over getting the right thing done. Mm -hmm. that, that's what's just on my mind. Because it, it, does need, it does need the cabinet to be able to function properly. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting. So, you know, so report said that um, the president has been making adjustments to the list you know, with some additions, replacements made to it. But then how difficult do you consider forming, uh, uh, you know, making a ministerial list uh, before it's not been published for the people to... To see. Okay, you know, you know, um, if you look at it constitutionally, I think it might be section five. The, the president is the embodiment of ex executive powers. He's the chief executive officer of, of, of the country. So I expect that this is prerogative. But you also know that almost every democracy in the world is either presidential or, 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 or parliamentary. parliamentary. So you would have in a presidential system, the president determines who will be ministers. But recall that he got there with some help. So it would be unfair to think that he's going to make those decisions solely. And recall also, under our own democratic system, you are sponsored by a political party. We do not have independent candidature. So it means that he wouldn't do it alone. Also recall that as a process, you would have the list sent to the security operatives to determine whether everyone is fit mm. for They're purpose. Eligible. Yes, and they are eligible. And if, if that list comes back and there are serious questions around certain personalities. I'm sure being the sort of person he is, he wants to be sure that things are done uh, properly and, and criticism will always come. But you want to be sure it's not criticism that it's due. You want to be sure that some people are just being flimsy. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's, that's the way I see it. So it's, 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 it's not surprising that he would want to make changes based on the procedure and based on the fact that there'll be interest. See the PI, PIA, it took to, to almost 20 years. Exactly. Once there is interest, <laughs> you have a lot of debates, you have a lot of back and forth. It's only when something that doesn't involve finances, doesn't involve power or influence, that you will, will get done without much debate. Mm. So I'm not surprised. But it's, it's good that we have a 60-day rule now. Mm. So At there is an obligation. Yes. Yes. It, maybe subsequently, uh, another law could be amended to say, Make it 30 days, yes. you know, as the case yes. may be. Yes. But uh, anyway, we're going somewhere, making <laughs> progress. But talk to us from the, the how challenging do you think it, it, it is to melt 
the issue of political patronage with the issue of competent hands. Recall that the president has said that, well, I am going to uh, have a cabinet, you know, create a government of national competence. And he has been putting the issue of competence on the front burner. Recall when he was uh, governor of Lagos State, it was all about the people who surrounded him were people who had capacity in different fields and endeavors. Mm -hmm. And he wants to replicate that now that he is the commander in chief of the, uh, in, in Nigeria. But of course, like you said, he didn't get the presidency alone. There were, he, he got the help of a lot of people. So how challenging would it be to melt the, a, a list that would have those persons and also competent persons, you know, to drive? Oh, that one, one, politics or political capacity and competence are not mutually exclusive. Mm. You can't be politically strong. I know a, a few people who I think are politically strong and are, and are also good technocrats. I think a BRF, I think a, if you go to the North, I think an a, a Malam El Rufai. A number of people are both politically sound and also have the competence to, to deliver. So I, I, I think whilst it will be difficult, I don't think it's as difficult as many people say. Okay. And I also think the fact that you have politicians as ministers doesn't also mean they wouldn't perform because they are not the ones who would necessarily do the job. It's policy. And being able to drive, you know, what, what leadership entails is to bring people together and help them achieve what they couldn't have achieved individually. So it's about leading the charge. The president, as a person, first needs to lead the charge. He's made some good decisions around um, ensuring that we have a unified exchange system on subsidy. And, and some of those are painful. They're painful because it had to be done at some point. Although I think it should have been done during a... Jonathan administration, for example, because it's easier to take certain decisions when a country is prosperous. So I think it's going to be difficult, but I think it's not something insurmountable. I think it's something he's, he's very, he's politically very strong. So I expect that he's going to uh, pull his weight and he's going to get it done. And it will always be a mix of both. Some people won't be happy. I think some, a few people may be disappointed, but I think it will still be that mix of politics and competence. And they're not mutually exclusive. You can have someone who is a politician who is also very, very adept at, at getting results. Well, due to this delay, you know, the president's critic have, um, critics have latched on the fact that he's, no, he's yet to announce his, um, you know, the, the ministers that will be working with him for the rest of um, his, I mean, for the next for uh, three, uh, three years plus. Um, they're now saying that. But then he said, you said it came hitting the ground running, but it, just, it doesn't look like he's, he has hit the ground running. Fine, you mentioned some of the policies, uh, some of the things that he's done, but it doesn't look like he has come prepared. Do you see it that way? Is it possible for someone to come in and then pronto, you announce your, 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 your ministers? Okay, I think the, the mistake we make at times is we compare ourselves with the Western world. You know, a lot is already, you, you, when you have institutions, strong institutions, even when you have a combination of strong institutions and strong men, you'd make progress faster. I always tell people, certain countries would, would, would work on autopilot. A country like the US, even Canada, Norway, Sweden, they work on autopilot. Nigeria cannot because, um, I, I, and I wouldn't want to go, to insert, go into certain details. I think at times we have government that takes us forward, next administration then takes us backwards, and then we need to move forward again. So the problem is we do not have strong institutions. If you already did have strong institutions, then you can hit the ground to do certain things. Now, when I say hit the ground running, I mean in terms of policy, policy direction, promises he made. Um, I'm not sure he made any promise around um, releasing the list of um, ministers within a, within a month or whatever it is. Yeah. And the fact that human beings are the most complex people to deal with. And, and I think that's why we have that law. And once he set the state, it's done within 60 days, then you expect that the next person probably does that, then does it in 45 days. And my understanding is that this has been ready for a while. It's just that he... he Different from Lagos State when he was governor, 14 million people. This is 200 million people with different interests, different states. You've got six even, geopolitical... Even Lagos State is difficult to govern. Yes, you've govern. Nigeria. No, you've got six geopolitical um, zones. zones. Yeah. So everyone does have stuff they want. Then you first need to determine whether it's a governor who's going to nominate in states where you don't have governors. Who is the leader of that party in the state? Mm -hmm. 
if you want to form a, a, a government of national unity, that even makes it more difficult because you're going to go to war with people in your own party because they're going to say your loyalty is first to the party. We don't want someone from those other parties. But you say we've got a few, a few competent people from those parties. Let's bring them in. You fight that battle for, for a couple of weeks. So it's not going to be that straightforward. I, I'd have been surprised if he did it in a month. Uh, but that's not taken away from the fact that he's hit the ground running. Mm. Also, when you do run, there's a period of inertia. Mm. You, you see the way um, the, the Man U fan, who, who was the fastest um, athlete uh, recently, I've forgotten his name, um, the 100, 200 meter um, guy, Bolt. Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt. Yeah. He, he starts at times, he starts fast, slows down, and then picks up. There's always that period of inertia. I'm sure if you do, there, there'll be something in physics, physics that tell us that. I'm a lawyer, so I never did physics, but I know that there's always that period. So I guess that's it. So once you have your ministers in, they hit the ground running. Mm. Yes, that's what I, I, I expected. I'm not surprised. Oh, all right. N Nigerians at this time, are, are, I believe the expectation of Nigerians are really high. And at times like this, Nigerians... But, but what do you think is responsible for Nigerians hunger for what the ministerial list should look like, <laughs> the names that should be there, you know, the experience. That, what, 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 what do you think is responsible for, for that? Put it in a few buckets. One bucket is interest. Okay. And when I mean interest, it's vested interest. If my uncle becomes minister, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm better off. Regional interest. Okay. Personal vested interest. And there are those who really just want to see the country move on and make progress. So uh, once you have those buckets, that would explain why everyone is anxious. I want to know whether my uncle, uh, of course, I, there are certain people I'm interested in that, okay, maybe I'll get certain opportunities if they get in there. Naturally. So that would be anxiety for me too. You understand? So it's, it's interest, generally speaking. Whether interest which is altruistic, whether it's interest which is selfish, rested, yeah, it's interest. It's interest. And human nature, that's why the only books will tell us to not be anxious for anything. Mm. You understand? Because the, by nature, human beings are anxious. They want to get things done. We've got 80, 70, 90 years on Earth. So you want to do a lot very quickly. That's it. Once you're in your 70s, you're tired, you're weak. If you, if you were riding a Lamborghini at 70, younger kids are going to say, what's wrong with this old man? <laughs> so you want to do that in your 40s, in your 50s. So I think it's, it's all of that interest and what you want to achieve. Maybe, maybe you won't blame Nigerians the more because we just have about five, 55 years uh, life expectancy. Yes, it makes it so worse. Everyone wants to do everything it quickly. Makes it more quickly. Yeah, very you get quickly. <laughs> yes, quickly yeah. But that's just on a lighter mode. But then, as a lawyer, um, we, I, I, I think we, he has about two, three days left for him to, you know, bring his Correct. cabinet. Uh, I mean, uh, his ministers to bear. Uh, what happens if he doesn't beat the deadline? Uh, well, it, uh, the, the sad thing about about. Um, presidential system is that the president is very powerful. You can't even take him to court. You can't take his office to court. You can't take him as the president, um, BAT, to court. So I, I, it just, it's an obligation that has to be fulfilled. That's the much I recall, that amendment. You have an obligation. And I'm sure he's responsible. He's got people who are advising him, who will tell him that the law requires that he does that. And I'm... I, 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 maybe it's even in the house already. You know, you know how politicians are. Many times when there are rumors and they deny it, it's usually true. It's probably in the house already, and they're not going because then you're going to apply a lot of pressure. Because you saw a few things, a few names mentioned that, oh, this person is probably going to be minister for something. And I have heard certain rumors too. Some of those things may even be true. So how did they know if the list wasn't there? Mm. A number of names have come up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Speculation. Yeah. Yes, yeah, speculation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let, let, let me put you on hold a little bit. We'll be right back on this. Uh, you're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's go on a break. We'll be 